Okay, here is the playing card, dub delay, Las Vegas vintage, classic, uh, evil, scary box of ghosts. And I'm about to show you what it sounds like direct from its one of its two outputs. It has three inputs. These three are for mixing three sounds through 1K resistors. This one is full volume input. All right, here we go. And two outputs. You can also use an output as an input to add something you don't want delay to. We've got two different ranges. That's the big lo-fi range. We're using nano loop to uh, send it some loops to show you it off to you. And I send it to the short range here. some dub delays, we can go really quick and go some to flanger chorus territory. And this button I've been teasing, that just makes it freeze. It's just a high amount of feedback is what it is. Back to make it kind of roll and fuzzify without feeding back on itself all the way. I even got a little tiny LED, it was like the thinnest, little stockiest LED I could find. But now I'm sure you want to see the guts. So it's USB powered. It uses that karaoke chip I showed you before, PT2399. It's a, just a delay chip common for karaoke machines. So I took the pot off this board here and moved it there. I took the same 50k pot from another one of these boards and put it between pin 6 and ground. Remove this resistor here. Now this pin here, the fourth one from the right here and the second one from the right here, I found where they go, added a couple solder dots and ran them to the button. So shorting, uh, this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so pin 10, 11, 12, 13, pin 10 and 13. So the fourth one from the right, second one from the left, those are the two pins I shorted for the switch. So I got 10k resistors here on each of the inputs to right here where it actually goes into the delay. So these don't wallop each other when they mix the sounds together. And then this switch just adds this resistor, it's about 64, 68k, to basically double the range of this pot. If you pull out this little baby resistor right here, that's the one that's closest to the center wiper of that pot. That's the pot that's the uh, delay repeats. The feedback, basically, how many times it repeats on itself. That pot came with it, that middle wiper, it's closest to this resistor. You replace this resistor with 10K, and that's how you get it to feed back on itself at the highest setting without ruining it at the lowest setting. If you just bridge this resistor, then you try to turn the volume all the way down or the repeats all the way down, and you lose all your volume. Or this, you turn your repeats all the way down and you get basically a bypass. I got a glob of solder on the end of the tip and got the glob kind of over the resistor and then it kind of lifted off. It's stuck in the glob. There we go. There's a kind of tiny glob of solder debris right there. I'm just going to flick it away because it didn't get a joint. It's just a, just globbed there coldly. So it should just pop right off. There we go. So yeah, then we shake this upside down so no globs like that short anything out. It's so colorful in here. So rustic colorful in here. It's like it should be for a dub delay. So this is the resistor I was telling you about adding from the wiper here. It's a 10k resistor and that's going to stop it from, uh, that's going to make it able to delay, uh, repeat. Okay, so this resistor is the 10k one I was telling you about. Uh, we can't have it not have this resistor or when we turn the repeats knob all the way down we get silence. But with 10k it's in the perfect spot so that so 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 
So it's the perfect spot so that when the knob is all the way up, the delay repeats on itself or feeds back on itself. But when the knob is not, so we still get a good sweep though, if that makes sense. We can turn the knob all the way up and get a delay that freaks out and feeds back on itself. Or we can turn the knob down a little bit and get sensible delay, or all the way down and we get sort of a bypass. And I keep having to re-solder this jerk because I keep getting a cold solder joint. So let me get, make sure this resistor is getting all the way hot. And there we go. That I know is a good solder joint. See, I can tug on it. It doesn't just pop apart. Here we go. That's my dad, by the way, pop apart. Here we go. Put this back under the wire that was there a moment ago. So, make sure both parts are getting hot enough. If this resistor wire doesn't get hot enough, then this wire won't really be stuck to it. There we go. So, you can also see this ball right there is where that previous resistor was that was closest to the center or wiper lug of that pot. So I bridged that over so there's just no resistor there, but it's not a blank spot either. I bridged the connection to just basically replace where that resistor was with a glob of solder. Now this resistor here takes its place. It's 10K, which allows it to turn the repeats up so high that it feeds back on itself and goes willy-nilly. All right, final bit of the tour after using it for a few weeks, I shorted this resistor, meaning that this first jack connects directly to the input of this board, and those two output jacks connect directly to the output, but the next three jacks each have a resistor in line that lets it uh, spread the love, basically, so three things can connect and connect together as a mixer without one of them overpowering the rest of them. So there's a 1K resistor, three of them, for these first three jacks, and then this one's just directly hooked in, so it's like mixer action. mention this knob, but that's just the blend knob. So you can blend this all the way down and use it just as a mixer. Or bring it up and your mixer makes everything into dub reggae or new wave music. Or lo-fi. Ah, dreamy. One last thing, the case, actually from 1983, Las Vegas playing cards represent I had to get on one more time to show you how cool it can be when you get a really nice rolling dub delay that really enhances the beat. Thanks to Look Mom No Computer for the 
inspiration to do more with this chip. This is the third thing I've made with this chip. I bumped into it before and then I saw him using it again and I had to dive back in. So when a, lo a note lines up dead on with a previous note, it'll cancel it out and get that thin, greedy, messed up sound set. 